Good morning and welcome to TMS Book Club. My name is Soela Langeni from Book Circle Capital. We're an independent bookshop that focuses on African literature. And as you know, we always bring you some of the latest stories from this, our beautiful country, South Africa. And today, I'm very honored to talk to Kevin Van Veek, who's the author of this new book, Chris Van Veek, Irascible Genius. You are an attorney that's worked as a legal advisor in several uh, South African companies, but today, we're here to talk about you being an author. Good morning and thank you for being here. Oh, thanks, well, it's, I'm happy to be here and I'm excited to chat about my little effort there. Right, yeah. it's, a, it's a huge effort and congratulations on it. Yes. Now, your father sadly passed away in 2014 due to cancer, something that you write about in the book. And it made me curious to say, why then write the book a couple of years later? How did this book come about? I think it was an idea that was germinating in my mind for many years, um, specifically after his funeral, mm. um, because I gave the, the eulogy at his funeral. Mm. And after I gave the eulogy, I thought to myself, there's many stories that I could have mentioned. But I think in doing so, it also sort of uh, morphed into many thoughts about my father and my mother, mm. because uh, my mother also sadly passed away mm. um, just a couple of years after my father. Mm. And all these thoughts kind of built up into me starting to express myself mm. on my computer screen um, in very short little sentences. And I was actually looking at one of the files the other day. I was doing these short sentences for probably six months before I actually it, the sentences became longer. Um, so it was this very burning feeling of wanting to express myself yeah. and wanting to pay tribute to my parents. Yeah. Um, specifically my dad, who was the, the writer yeah. and the well-known person. Storyteller. Yeah, absolutely. But it was, it's a tribute to my mom as well. So yeah, that, that's kind of how it sort of started the idea in my mind. That's so comforting because if somebody's watching and is wondering where do those, li those lines lead daily, they could actually lead to a full book. Absolutely, and I think it's something my father advocated his whole life, um, storytelling, mm. and for people to read and to enjoy the art of storytelling, because yeah. everyone really loves stories. Yes, that's um, true. Yeah, so I think it's just something that I sort of maybe subconsciously learned from my father in the time that I've lived with him. I lived with him for many years, obviously. Sure, sure. And um, yeah, I think everyone has stories within them. Um, it's just a matter of knowing how to, you know, articulate it, getting the inspiration to do it. Mm. And I think that's what happened to me, ultimately. Yeah. Now, the title, Irascible Genius. I actually, when I got the book from Penn Macmillan, I had to Google the, the word irascible. And I was curious, uh, why this title? It was slightly controversial okay. because it's a very unusual word. Yes. Um, and not even I knew the word until I read it in a science book about 15 years ago. Mm. And um, when I read the the definition because I read the term irascible genius that's how it was expressed in the book mm. when I read the definition I, I saw it related to someone who's kind of short-tempered yeah short and, fuse kind yes exactly okay. and um, I smiled to myself and I thought that sounds like my father <laughs> he was alive at the time yeah I didn't um, tell him that I had a new nickname for him yeah but um, yeah after <laughs> the fact I have I put it in the book because it speaks to his character. Mm. He was a principled man. Mm. Um, and um, when he got angry, he told people that. But it, the anger was also quirky sometimes, mm. in the sense that it was funny yeah. and unnecessary. Yeah. So I poked fun at him a little bit. And later, you guys would always, as he was older, you actually started making fun of him in that anger when he's in that, those mm -hmm. moments. Very, very often. You mentioned that uh, your father was not really a religious man, and he didn't do things based on any allegiance to any deity, but he, he, he's somebody that just had this affinity for people and he just loved people. What do you think drove that about him? Um, I think what drove it was probably apartheid mm. because um, his anger probably started when he started writing um, protest literature yeah. back in the 70s. And um, that's when he, well, obviously he became aware of apartheid and what was mm. happening in the country. Mm. And that's when, when he became an activist. But I think that's sort of where his humanistic tendency started. Yeah. So I grew up in an interesting household because my dad wasn't religious at all. Mm. My mother was very religious. Mm. So I kind of saw both sides of the coin, but they were both very good people yeah. and wanted to help people because, you know, that's that's what they the wanted. The condition to they found themselves Absolutely. in. Absolutely. You mentioned that uh, in, in one of the chapters, the one about storytelling, that everybody always asked you, Kevin, will you be a writer like your dad? And it's something that you shook off. You were like, not even, it's not who I am, but later, today, here we are, we've got a book. Yeah. And I thought, how did this journey of you then becoming a writer 
then develop? Yeah, I think it was, it was also one of those subconscious things because yeah. when people ask me the question, um, in fact, if they rephrase it and says, what's the last thing you'll do in your life? Yeah. I say, right, Brooks, I say, I'm not interested. And, and I think when I was growing up, I was a kid who was just playing all the time. Yeah. To me, it looked very laborious. My father sitting in front of the computer or initially the typewriter when I was very young. Yes. Um, and all these piles of papers. And I thought, I don't want to do this kind of work. And what's the point as well? Mm. But not knowing over time, as I was listening to him speak and listen, see him speak to people, and started reading his work, mm. I started realizing the value of storytelling mm. and, the, and how nice it is, quite frankly. Yeah. Um, and I think that's how it kind of just came into my mind. And over time, I evolved into someone who enjoys stories and enjoys finding out about people. Yeah. I've actually, in my career as a lawyer, I found myself often, um, when I'm in companies or helping other businesses, when I meet new clients, um, I'm more interested about them the in story. them than yeah. their problem per se. Sure. Um, but I, I've always asked people questions. I've always asked where they come from. I see you the, actually write about that in the book. Y yes. Yeah. I, I see their surname. I say, what nationality is that surname? Yeah. Because people interest me. But I think the, the fascinating thing is that we all interconnected somehow. And that's what stories give you. We interconnected, we inspire each other. And when you write about s somebody or about something, people can relate to it. Mm. You can see, well, I'm not alone in this situation. Mm. Well, I've also experienced this. And I think that's just part of the magic of, of telling stories. Paging through the book, I gathered that reading played a big role in your father's life mm. and yours too. Would you say that's part of also the build up to how this book came about? Uh, yes, very much so. Yeah. Um, my father was, it was interesting because he was an advocate of reading. I mean, obviously he was a writer. Yes. So he always encouraged me to read. But he never forced me to do it. Okay. He was never persistent, but he said he encouraged me. And I remember growing up, I, I liked reading nonfiction. How it started was, my father once told me that where we grew up, River Lee, the street names are named after rivers all around the world. Wow. So I tested his theory. Yeah. And I went to this huge orange atlas he had, and I looked at our street name, Arno, and I said, ah, oh, there it's in Italy. Wow. Um, Colorado Drive, ah, oh, there's in the U.S. So reading was definitely something that he inculcated in both my brother and I yeah. um, for, for many, many years. But I think doing it as subtly as he did yes. was a lot more effective than shouting, no, you must read, you must yes. read. Yes, how many read. pages, which is something exactly. that I often do sometimes. <laughs> so I'm being convicted right now. <laughs> so can we expect more works from you? Can we expect more books? Um, it's a dangerous question to answer because I'd love to say yes. Yes. And I think this is also giving me some kind of um, idea that maybe I can string a couple of sentences together. Yeah. But um, in doing so, I think I will, exp I'm already, many ideas, ideas are percolating in my mind. Sure. So hopefully in the near future, there will be more books. Um, yeah. I'm actually playing around with a script for a television series, yeah. inspired by experiences of my friend. So yeah, watch the space. In a year or two, there might be some new stuff. Yeah. What would you like readers to take away from Irascible Genius? I think giving people an awareness of my dad's writing. Yeah. Because if I'm half as good as my father's writing, I'll take it. Mm. He was exceptional. Yeah. He had this fluidity to his writing. Um, and I think if people can discover my father's writing, they'll be you know, richer for it. Yeah. Um, but also, it's a tribute to my parents. And I only realized this after I finished the book. It's basically a long love letter to my parents, yeah. my mother and my father. Yeah. And I think I want people to know that, you know, they've had an important effect in my life yeah. and influence on me. And I think that's what I'd like people to, to take from, from the book, yeah. That's so beautiful. And I think our viewers will definitely get that from the book. Well, you've had it here on TMS Book Club. Copies of Irascible Genius are available here at Book Circle Capital and good bookstores nationwide. With TMS Book Club, it's me, Sewela Langeni. Thank you for watching.